Hello. In the second part of the theme seven, I will discuss uh, how game theory can be used to gain more insights on the uh, international environmental agreements. So I will not go to very much in detail to the game theory in this lesson. You probably have some other courses where you can then, then go more deeply to game theory. But uh, I start with this kind of uh, like how, how the game is mathematically uh, defined in game theory. So there are four ess essential elements that need to be defined. We need to have some, some uh, players. Then we need some uh, to, to define what kind of information these players have to make their moves. And, and then they define the actions available to each player at each decision point. And then what are the resulting payoffs from each, each outcome? So with this kind of elements, then we can mathematically ana analyze the, 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 what, what is this kind of, uh, uh, if there are exist, for example, dominant strategies and what would be the, the likely outcome of the game, so-called equilibrium of the, of the game. And we, I will briefly refer to the Nash equilibrium shortly. But to gain insight, let us consider this uh, perhaps the most uh, well-known uh, game, uh, not only in economics, but also in, in, uh, in uh, popular media and, and also in, in, uh, in, in, the, in the literature, which is known as the prisoner's dilemma. So in this example, taken from the permanent all textbook, uh, the prisoner's dilemma has been adapted to the current context of uh, international agreements. So let's consider if, as two, two players are two large countries uh, indicated by X and Y. You could think, for example, of, of the USA and China, and, and we could think about the, the uh, like abatement of uh, greenhouse gas emissions or, or carbon dioxide, for example. So in this ex example, we have like this abstract countries X and Y, and uh, and there are two strategies. The countries can either cooperate to to abate emissions, or they can defect and and continue to pollute. Uh, and uh, this matrix, which is called called the payoff matrix, then indicates the the payoffs uh, that uh, we can think of them as indicating not only the GDP but also the the damages from the from the global warming and and uh, for example all kinds of uh, um, uh, damages from from storms and other other natural disasters uh, and perhaps also the the, the it, it accounts for everything also like deteriorating environmental quality and and so on so this payoffs take into account the, like like everything re relevant to the societal societal well-being not only not only the gdp and uh, so how do we read this kind of payoff matrix? So here we have country X has these strategies on the rows. So, so here we have possibilities to, to defect, which means that they continue to pollute and then, then uh, cooperate, which means that they cooperate with, with abatement. So these rows indicate X's uh, decision and we read from the first number indicates the payoff for, for country X and the higher the better. So, so when the decision makers or the president or whatever in country X is uh, considering these uh, strategies, whether to cooperate or defect, uh, then uh, the leaders of country X are looking at the first number and they will see that uh, actually whatever, irrespective of what, what, uh, what country Y is doing, for them, it is better to continue polluting because the first number is always higher in this. Uh, if if uh, country Y is then defecting, then uh, then for for X, its own interest is also to defect and pollute. But even if country Y is willing to cooperate, and country Y even might be unilaterally abating, still uh, it is in in the interest of country X to free ride and continue to pollute. So therefore. Uh, the dominant strategy of country X is to pollute. So it is the pop country X would be on the on the first row. 
If we then look at it from the perspective of country Y and the leaders of country Y, then country Y can choose whether to have on the left column or right column. And the payoffs of country Y we can read as the second number. So leaders of country Y compare this second number and uh, comparing these different columns, we see that, uh, that uh, if country X is uh, polluting as we expect that they will do, then uh, it is also in the interest of country Y to pollute because then two is greater than one, the second number. But even if country Y would, uh, would assume that, uh, that X is abating, then in the country's Y interest would be to free, right? Because uh, this, out, this uh, pay of four in the, in the polluting X case is higher than, than pay of uh, three in the, in the abatement scenario. So therefore, also, also then uh, country Y has incentive to pollute whatever the country X is doing. So also in that sense, country Y has the dominant strategy. And we end up to this outcome where both, uh, uh, both countries continue to pollute and they, they, they reach this um, pay of two and two each, each of them. And then this is known as the, as the, also the Nash equilibrium of the game. So the Nash equilibrium, uh, I do not go to the technical details, but here you have, can see on this slide the formal definition. So intuitively, we can think of the Nash equilibrium as a situation where no player can gain by changing its, its strategy. And uh, so, so there, there is no, no, no higher payoff by, by deviating from this, uh, unilaterally deviating if the other player is continuing to play at its, its, uh, its optimal strategy. Uh, not all games have a Nash equilibrium and not all games uh, have a unique Nash equilibrium. And maybe the last point is also important that Nash equilibrium is not necessarily Pareto efficient. And this we can see in this previous uh, uh, prisoner's dilemma example. So notice that the payoffs two and two uh, uh, in, in, is, is the Nash equilibrium. However, if both countries would manage to cooperate, uh, they would get a higher payoff. So they would have three and three each if they manage to manage to cooperate and abate together. However, both countries have incentive to deviate from this kind of uh, cooperation. So both countries have a self-interest to free ride. And that, that is this kind of uh, tragedy of the, of the prisoner's dilemma that, that, that in this case, both countries end up, end up polluting, even though it would be in their, in their interest to cooperate. However, this kind of, uh, kind of uh, um, incentive structure makes both both countries uh, have the have the incentive to deviate and uh, even though this this game is very simple i think it can still give a very powerful insight to for example why it is so difficult to make this kind of uh, binding uh, international agreements on on uh, and abating carbon dioxide emissions and uh, and uh, and and uh, mitigating the uh, global warming so this is perhaps the most uh, well-known example of uh, of uh, of game theory, also in in uh, in popular science. Um, there are of course other other possibilities. So here's another another simple example taken from permanent al textbook uh, known as the chicken game. So here again we have two countries X and Y, and the two strategies to pollute or bait. But uh, but uh, this example illustrates that how this uh, this uh, so some uh, minor changes to the payoff structure can change the outcome uh, outcome completely and the idea in this chicken game is that uh, that uh, when the payoff of uh, of this uh, situation where where both are free riding and both continue to pollute then the pay out pay payoff is is very highly negative uh, so it might be a situation then that uh, that uh, unilateral abatement of country X or country Y might be the Nash equilibrium. So this simple example also illustrates that uh, the Nash equilibrium is not necessarily unique. It's possible that, uh, or in this case, we have two equilibriums. It's possible that uh, that um, country X is doing abatement uh, and uh, country Y is free riding. 
and and it's also possible that other way around that that country Y is abating and and uh, country X is free riding. So this this involves this kind of situation where where this kind of uh, uh, payoffs are so so negative with, in the situation that both countries are polluting that uh, that uh, at least one of the countries will find it uh, beneficial to abate. And uh, we can think of it also in this kind of uh, form of a sequential game. So so it can be played so that both countries need to make uh, this this uh, uh, move simultaneously. Or it is it is uh, possible that also that uh, that their sequential game. So the right kind of uh, tree structure illustrates that how how we can think of it if if we have for example a um, um, sequential game. So suppose that uh, that uh, country X can make the first move. So so country X chooses whether they pollute or abate. And uh, and then country Y observes the the choice of of X and then makes their own choice. So suppose that for example X announces that that it's going to pollute no 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 matter what. So then then Y is then ending up to this upper part of this this tree structure, and then country Y needs to decide do they also pollute or do they want to want to abate. So country Y is comparing this second number. So when when country y, y finds itself in this uh, this node where where X is already decided to pollute, then country Y needs to compare minus four and minus two. So it is in the self interest of country Y then to abate because the, if both countries are polluting, then the situation is is very bad. So even if country X is continuing to pollute, country Y has then then in their self-interest to, to, to abate, to at least uh, decrease the damages from minus four to, to, to minus two. So in that sense, this, this might be this kind of uh, describing uh, the, the climate policy situation that, for example, uh, the European Union is, is uh, unilaterally abating, even though, though uh, many other countries around the world are continuing to pollute. So, so this might be kind of kind of indicating this kind of uh, or kind of ill helping to illustrate that why this kind of situation might be also still a, still this kind of um, a Nash equilibrium, and there is no incentive for either either country then to deviate. If 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 we find to in this situation that uh, that X is polluting, Y is uh, abating, then then of course this free rider has has advantage, but uh, but. Uh, uh, also, country Y has no incentive to deviate if it ends up to this kind of kind of situation. So these two simple examples illustrate that uh, that uh, how game theory can give some insights to this uh, international cooperation. And in fact, this is a very extensively studied area in environmental economics, uh, and there are a lot of different types of of games that can be applied to to understanding. Uh, uh, international environmental agreements. So uh, these previous examples are uh, belong to the so-called non-cooperative uh, game theory, but there exist also cooperative games, which which kind of focus more on that uh, that when what kind of coalitions are are sustainable and how the costs are shared within the coalition. Uh, there are different kinds of uh, other kind of classifications, like we can think of symmetric versus asymmetric games, uh, zero sum versus non zero sum games. Uh, I already mentioned this simultaneous versus uh, sequential. So the chicken game could be thought of as, a, or it could be played as a simultaneous game, moves games, or as a sequential game. And that, of course, to some extent influences the, the outcome. Then the previous examples are. In the perfect information games that both players know the payoffs and they know also what are the payoffs of the other player, but it's also possible to make uh, consider imperfect information games where payoffs are not uh, not uh, known for sure. Uh, previous examples were discrete games, but then there exists also a class of continuous games where you can choose this uh, um, this. Uh, this action from some some kind of uh, continuum of possibilities and then also the previous simple examples were single shot games 
there exist also multi-period games or repeated games where where this uh, similar kind of games is played over multiple time periods and there is also possible to then learn for the players that are they are they willing to cooperate or are they are they are they free riding and then also in multi-period games they allow also also then players to for example punish if the if these uh, uh, other players are not uh, if the other players are free riding or not not uh, collaborative so uh, there are there are of course much more richer set of games and and uh, and possibilities to to analyze uh, but uh, in this uh, lesson i do not go to like more more technical details so the game theory of course very quickly becomes uh, rather mathematical and and uh, and uh, then therefore falls beyond the scope of this this course but if you're interested in in uh, game theory and also also uh, uh, international environmental problems then this is of course very very interesting application area for the for game theory and uh, here on this slide i have taken some of the lessons from game theory based on the permanent al textbook uh, that uh, that uh, there are several kind of lessons that uh, that we can we can gain from game theory regarding the uh, international uh, environmental environmental agreements so the first lesson is that if there exists some kind of uh, international political institution that has enough authority and power, then it's of course easier to 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 administer and, and implement uh, environmental cooperation. Uh, think about, for example, United Nations, which which uh, most of the and uh, nations around the world are, are members of. Uh, However, or unfortunately, the United Nations doesn't have a lot of uh, uh, authority or power to, to force countries to, to cooperate. For comparison, then we can consider the European Union, for example, which is also an international political institution. And uh, clearly, the European Union has much more authority and power to its member states uh, it's not perfect, of course. There, there's uh, there, and also member states have have like a like lot of uh, a degree of freedom, but but definitely the European Union has more more authority and power to its member states than, for example, United Nations, and therefore uh, it is uh, easier to to agree also on uh, on uh, environmental uh, policies at, at the EU level than at the at the global level of the United Nations. Now then there are lessons also that if the output of the international agreement uh, would yield private goods rather than public goods, then, then it makes it easier to, to uh, find an agreement uh, because then there's also like a substantial concentration of interest in this, this uh, parties involved. Then also if a large proportion of nation specific or localized benefits uh, relative to, to transnational benefits uh, then, then that of course uh, uh, implies that there is like a strong self-interest uh, in in at least in certain nations, uh, and this can can also result that there are some 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 nations take the leadership role in uh, in this, uh, especially if it is some big important country that takes the leadership. Then it's easier for the for the smaller countries to to join, or the large country can can force, for example, with the, with the trade. Uh, relationships and trade agreements to 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 the, the smaller countries to also also follow the suit uh, when the number of cooperating countries is smaller then of course it's easier to 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 make agreements uh, and also high cultural similarity can help um then then if there's a lot of uncertainty about the costs and benefits associated with the agreement then of course it's much more difficult to reach an agreement uh, um, the continuous relationship can refer to for example uh, trade agreements or trade relationships that uh, that uh, that uh, it's easier than than uh, countries to agree to uh, co cooperate in environmental protection if there is uh, there is also also important trade relationship at stake uh, and this also is similar to this linked linked benefits uh, 
Then time profile matters also if the if the short run cost of implementation is relatively low, and uh, if the if a large proportion of benefits can be obtained relatively quickly in the in the short uh, amount of time rather than somewhere far in the future, then that that will be also of course definitely helpful. And finally, of course, the cost of bargaining also can can influence the uh, how how easy it is to reach to reach an agreement on an international scale. So this also these many of these lessons point to the, the situation that it's much easier to uh, for some small number of countries to to agree on some kind of local environmental issue rather than reach a consensus on the, on the global scale problem like like for example. Uh, the climate change and and mitigating climate change. So in the next uh, lesson, I will then turn to international trade and discuss the notions of pollution pollution haven hypothesis and the uh, carbon tariffs, particularly the the recently introduced EU EU carbon tariffs. Thanks for your attention and see you on the next lesson. Bye.